While I really enjoyed the first Brooks Catamount, it sometimes felt like just a road shoe with slightly bigger lugs. But two years later, with the totally new outsole and more added stack height, I can say that Brooks has delivered an update that feels native to the trails and was worth the wait. This is the Catamount 2. Yo, what's going on everybody? My name is Kofuzi and today I wanna to talk to you guys about the Brooks Catamount 2. Now before we give my thoughts on this shoe, I do wanna go over some disclosures. This is a pair of shoes that was sent to me by Brooks for the purpose of review, so I didn't have to pay for these shoes. However, they're not paying me to make this video or to use the shoe, and they're not gonna get a chance to preview any of my footage or my thoughts before you guys get a chance to see this video on YouTube. So with that disclosure out of the way, let's talk about the Brooks Catamount 2. First, let's go over some specs on the shoe. This is a 32 millimeter stack height shoe with a six millimeter drop, giving us 26 millimeters of midsole stack height. Now this midsole has two main things inside. First, the foam itself is Brooks DNA Flash, which is a nitro based foam that I have really been enjoying running in. And there's also something in here called Sky Vault. Now Sky Vault, it's not exactly a carbon fiber plate. It's not exactly a rock shield, but it kind of serves the purposes of both of those things. In the previous version, the Catamount version one, they had the ballistic rock shield. This one, I don't know if it's purely a rebranding or if it's more geared towards propulsion rather than purely just protecting against rocks. But this year they're calling it something completely different. They're calling it Sky Vault. Now also on the outsole for this shoe, they've completely changed the outsole pattern from the original Catamount. They rearranged the lugs and also made them a bit deeper. They're still using the Trail Tack rubber compound, but in addition to the change lug pattern, they've also cut slits into the part of the outsole that connects to the shoe. And this is gonna help allow the shoe to bend a little bit better, and I guess save like a tiny amount of weight. Moving to the upper, there's a two layer upper material. This top layer is designed to be water and abrasion resistant, while the inner polyester layer is supposed to be much more comfortable to be closer to your foot. And it is designed out of recycled materials. Overall, the upper has 34.5% recycled materials. And as far as other trail bona fides, this shoe has a toe cap that's gonna protect you from any time that you are kicking rocks and roots. And there is also gator attachment, as well as a little bit of kind of like a lace lasso, the piece of elastic where you can tuck the laces in if that's something that you're inclined to do to keep the laces from catching on anything like brush as you're running through some of those trails. As far as the tongue goes, there's almost no padding in it, which makes it feel really comfortable. And there's a moderate amount of padding around the heel cup that is relatively flexible, except for these sidewalls that are gonna serve to help keep things nice and stable when the trail gets a little bit wonky on you. Overall, this shoe comes in at a respectable weight of 9.7 ounces and 275 grams, which is just a touch heavier than last year's 9.3 ounces and 260 grams three grams. So with those specs out of the way, let's talk about what it was like to run in the shoe. I had an absolute blast running in the shoe, running in icy, snowy, and then also in muddy conditions as well. So I had a wide gamut of different experiences to be able to run in, and I had a fun time and confident time running in all of those types of conditions in the shoe. I feel like the shoe is a really great all around trail versatile shoe that you can kind of pick for pretty much whatever day that you want to get out there. The DNA flash midsole foam, which can sometimes feel a little bit too firm on the roads, feels really nice on the softer surfaces of the trails. And that foam combined with that sky vault together makes for a nice and snappy ride. So I feel like the shoe also does like to pick up the pace a little bit. The fit on this shoe is really nice and comfortable. I think Brooks did a really great job of creating a shoe that makes you feel locked in, but it also still feels roomy enough that I feel like I could be in the shoe and running for several hours if I had a much longer run planned for the day. Now, Brooks has said that this is water and abrasion resistant, and I'm, you know, I'll say that the parts that are this dual layer mesh 
do feel like they did a pretty good job of kind of keeping water out at least a little bit. It's not a waterproof material. They're not saying it's a waterproof material, but it's kind of water resistant ish in terms of what's going on with the upper. The only problem was for me on the really slushy day, there was a lot of ice melt that was also happening. This tongue is just kind of like a regular fabric textile mesh material. And whenever water got on that, that kind of instantly went through and it felt like my entire foot got really wet and really cold. On the other hand though, when it came to the really muddy day, I do feel like this toe cap, it did kind of keep most of the mud from getting into the shoe. So I felt like it was nice and protective there. Now the shoe also does have some slits cut into this kind of like layer of, I think it's TPU that's wrapping around kind of the bottom part of the upper here uh, and it has slits in it. So that way, even though it protects from water splashing in, it does let water get out, let's say if you do kind of submerge your foot. So overall, I would say that the Catamount 2 is best for use as a versatile trail runner. It's good at a variety of paces and it's very fun to run fast through the trails on it. And I do think that it's not the most aggressive in terms of its lug pattern or the compounds that they're using for the lugs. So I would say it's probably best suited for more runnable trails and the kind of trails that I have around me where there's a little bit of up and down, but nothing crazy in terms of elevation gain or in terms of technical terrain. Those kinds of trails I feel like a lot of people have access to a lot of the time. That's the kind of trails that I feel like the Catamount 2 is going to be really fun to be able to run in. Now in terms of shoes that you might want to pair it with, I feel like you're not going to need a lot of other trail shoes if you have the Catamount 2. So let's talk about some possible road pairing options. Staying within the Brooks brand, I think that the obvious choice for me is to pair it with the Hyperion Max. Both of these shoes use Brooks DNA Flash midsole foam. And both of these shoes have a little bit more stack and are a little bit more comfortable and enjoyable than their respective predecessors. The other shoe that I think could pair really well with the Catamount 2 if you're going from trail to road could be the Puma Velocity Nitro 2. Now, both of these shoes, again, have nitro-based foam, and I feel like there's a lot of similar feelings and sensations that are kind of going in terms of the ride dynamics, but you're getting a little bit of a lower slung road version of that like nitro foam type of feeling in this shoe. And this is a workhorse type of shoe that you could take on a variety of types of runs at a variety of paces. But if you're not sure if the Catamount 2 is for you, there's a couple of other shoes that I think could be worth your consideration. If you want a shoe that doesn't have quite as an aggressive of a lug pattern and maybe a little bit more speed oriented for some of your trail races, I think the Tecton X could be a really fun choice. Both of them are really comfortable. I think the Tecton X is maybe a little bit more comfortable and the lug pattern is a little bit more chill. So for those similarly runnable trails, depending on what you're looking for, I think the Tecton X could be something that you might really enjoy. But if you're looking for something that's a little bit more aggressive than the Catamount 2, then I think that you could look at the Peregrine 12. Now this is a very speedy shoe with a very aggressive lug pattern. But I will say that the price for that kind of aggressiveness and race readiness is that it's not the softest shoe. It's not a shoe that I'd want to be in for five, six, seven hours or more. So depending on what your needs are, again, you could look at the Catamount 2 or the Peregrine 12. Now let's take a look at the buying guide if you're interested in picking up a pair of the Catamount 2. This shoe is available now and it's retailing for $170, which kind of feels like a lot of money for I think what you're getting in this shoe. It is a trail shoe that I'm really enjoying, having a lot of fun in it. And I feel like I can pretty much take it out on any kind of trail run that I might want to go on here in the Midwest that I have available to me within probably a several hundred mile radius. So it's pretty usable for me in most situations, but I just feel like the $170 point is a lot. If you look at the Catamount one, I ran in the original version and also had a really good time running in that in a lot of the trails that are in my region. And that also worked for me. So if you could find a pair of Catamount ones on sale, that might be a good intro into DNA flash for the trails for you, depending on if the lug pattern is going to work for you. The Catamount 2 is definitely an upgrade in terms of traction and overall versatility in terms of where you can take the shoes. The Catamount 1 was a little bit more of kind of like a trail racer, a speedy, fast and dry trails type of shoe in my mind. The other thing that you consider is going back to some of these shoes that I had 
said that you can also consider. The Tekton X did retail for $200, but right now I'm seeing it for sale on Hoka for 160 bucks. So depending on that, I feel like 170, 160, I think that these two shoes are gonna be really close for a lot of people. They do feel different in terms of how they feel underfoot, but in terms of the ways that you would use the shoes, I feel like anytime I right reach for one, I could easily reach for the other and have a pretty good day. So you've got a couple of options out there depending on what you're looking for. But I can say that in terms of like kind of pure fun, I do have a little bit more fun in the Catamount 2 than I do in the Tecton X. So those are my thoughts on the Catamount 2. Let me know in the comments if you have any other questions or better yet, stop by the live stream that I do Monday through Friday right here on YouTube. I'd love to talk to you guys in the chat. That's all I have for today, everybody. Thanks so much for making it all the way to the end of this video. Hopefully you guys are staying safe out there on your runs and I will see you in the next one. Yo, what's going on?